Well, hello. Uh, that's me again. And if I speak a little bit funny today, just for you to know, I am on antibiotics and I have pretty substantial abscess sitting on my upper left K9. But I'm doing okay, all things considered. And the uh, pain kind of receded. And I think so I will improve by the time they will start doing the root canal, my favorite procedure. But uh, today uh, there will be no uh, formulas, no um, theory of operations, no probabilities. Um, we need to kind of concentrate on a couple of news uh, items. And one of those news items is the visit of uh, Germany's foreign minister, uh, Annalena Baerbock, uh, I believe I pronounced her name correctly, to Moscow and meeting with uh, Sergei Lavrov. Well, as already many commentaries uh, followed, including in English and German and what ha and Russian, what have you, after her meeting with Lavrov and her, uh, as always, pompous statements and threats to shut down Nord Stream 2, uh, people started writing that, my God, you know, we feel sorry for our country, Germany, that is, you know, and we feel sorry for Mr. Lavrov, who has to communicate with this kind of people all the time. And yes, I have to admit that uh, basically anything what passes in the combined West today for diplomacy, it's a really pathetic uh, 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 issue, it's a really pathetic picture, and it's how, how can you even communicate with those people? And most of them are not even the uh, uh, professional diplomats, and they have very little clue about the world outside. And same goes for Annalena Baerbock, whose only virtue is the fact that she's not ugly. She's a fairly attractive woman, which is really kind of like, oh, okay, that makes a little bit easier. But other than that, I mean, she is the uh, fanatical green and most likely some kind of asset of the globalist, uh, and which means American uh, uh, mafia, if you wish. And uh, considering the fact who Germans elected, uh, as the government, hey, you know what, Russians are, as I already stated, they are kind of twofold here. Obviously, all those pretty much empty threats about uh, shutting down Nord Stream 2 are, are coming from, uh, or on the condition that or if, or if Russia invades Ukraine. And that's the thing which we need to talk about, because I, I also uh, had this issue discussed on my blog, and the fact that, oh, if Russia invades Ukraine, which Russia doesn't want to do because Russia doesn't want to have Ukraine on its balance and it's just, you know, just leave it alone. But if it comes down to it, some people say, oh, yeah, there will be kind of, you know, partisan guerrilla warfare against Russians and, you know, from the territories of whatever Russia will not appropriate if it invades uh Ukraine, I have some news for people who still think that United States, CIA, whoever, NATO, uh, MI6, name it, uh, will be able to support some kind of the guerrilla warfare if Russia indeed goes in and takes uh, basically uh, out the uh, present uh, Ukrainian state, who splits into several parts and supposedly appropriated uh, uh, is the eastern part, which is oft, uh, often goes under the name of Novorossiya. Well, uh, people have to remember two major uh, uh, facts about guerrilla warfare, and that's what I wrote also in my blog. Guerrilla movement and uh, guerrilla or diversionary groups supported from the abroad are two very different things. They differ in scale, and guerrilla movement, in order to succeed, will have to be uh, supported by the locals. And it will have to have overwhelming support of locals. Well, that's not the case in Ukraine, and I'm not going to go into the psychology of the uh, population of what today would we call Eastern Ukraine, uh, very many of those people, while by no means pro-Russian, they won't mind actually to be invaded and occupied, because guess what? Then Russia will pay their uh, basically wages and their pensions and things of this nature. But what many people uh, miss is the fact that Russia already has its own guerrilla formations, which will counter 
those guerrillas, if the NATO or United States decides to prepare some kind of diversionary groups which will supposed to be attacking or committing basically terrorist acts, uh, if you look at the what's called LDNR militias or the armed forces of Donbass republics, they are those counterinsurgents. They are not insurgents, they are counterinsurgents in case, uh, indeed, if it happens. And guess what? They're pretty successful in uh, basically uh, dealing with any kind of their armed uh, insurgency in their territory. And if Russia will indeed, again, in if in the way Ukraine, it will be something similar to what has been done in Kazakhstan. Go in, change their uh, regime, so to speak, reconstitute whatever is left from Ukraine and put LDNR republics in charge. They already have a significant experience of the uh, govern uh, governance and they have a significant uh, armed forces and militia which can handle any kind of the Western support uh, terrorists and diversionary groups. So that's the issue which many people don't understand. And obviously the stream of this pompous and, you know, pompous BS coming from US and Western media in terms of what the United States and the West will do, if Russia, whatever, you know, same goes for this new Scholz government in Germany and this Annalena lady who, uh, who is in Moscow now and the point is that, okay, even if Russia invades, well, shut down the Nord Stream too. Why not? See what happens. Latest data on uh, the price of the hydrocarbons in Europe, uh, and it's already made it to the Financial Times today, is a direct threat to what really matters for real economy, without which uh, European Union, for example, will not exist, and this is still, there are huge issues for the uh, uh, steel industry and aluminum industry, and they are on the verge of dying in uh, European Union. But hey, I mean, it's not just the market issue, it's what the Brussels bureaucracy is, and that's what are what governments of the European Union nations are. They are suicidal and I'm sorry, well, Russia probably sits, you know, pretty and uh, just loves it, you know. And there is another, of course, another fundamental thing. Why don't they shut down Nord Stream 2, which Russia already returned its investment on it because of the astronomical prices on gas? And Russia is building uh, more oil and uh, gas pipes, but they go to the east. They go to the largely friendly nations and uh, those who are able to pay cash and those who are ready to basically pay whatever is required. So it, it is it's so simple that it's sometimes just, I mean, how can you even uh, judge or assess people who don't see this, uh, you know, trivial truth, really. But evidently they don't. They are ideologues. They don't, they are, most of them are utterly incompetent people with zero industrial and real economy experiences. And they, as I already started, stated, not for once, they wouldn't be able to run several in eleven store or paid rest, public restrooms in some, uh, you know, uh, third world locality. They, that's how incompetent they are, especially the issues of the real economy and energy and everything what makes the world go round and allows us to have uh, basically those conveniences and luxuries which we used to. And first of them are, of course, electricity, affordable energy, our houses to be heated up or cooled down during the summer, uh, running water, running everything. And that's what they do not understand. They don't know how to run it. So in this case, basically, uh, the threat of shutting down Nord Stream 2 and Baerbock sings not only from her own script, it's the script of basically the globalist people who run the both United States and the European Union. And again, as I said, and I'm not original here, the United States also sitting pretty here in this particular respect because, hey, European Union is supposed to become America's lunch. You die today for me to live tomorrow and die some other time l later. 
it's obviously not necessarily working out that well but as i already stated the plan is sound americans hey i'm united states citizen i like my you know uh let's put it in the personal so to speak uh, uh perspective and uh, cross section if you will I love my house heated, I love my car being, you know, uh, being, uh, or I love being able to drive my car and put some gas on it which I can afford, so hey, it's all about that, it's all about who lives and how. And if leaders or European uh, bureaucracy in Brussels and the governments of the European countries cannot handle it, I mean, sorry. I mean, we have to be very, how to put it, uh, uh, clear about it. And the same goes for the Americans too. Each nation deserves the government it elects. Americans went out and voted for Mr. Biden and hey, you know what, we already, you know what happens. Europeans went out and they voted for the globalist parties and especially, I mean, I, uh, ideologies which are completely suicidal, both economically and culturally, and they have, Europeans have to face the reality and face the results. And uh, whenever anybody says or prints things of like buyer's remorse, well, I'm sorry, don't buy something which you do not want to. If you are stupid enough to be brainwashed uh, by the media and by ideologists, hey, so be it. It is what it is. We live in the world where people have to take and start taking their personal responsibilities. Voter takes personal responsibility because voter has to live with whatever he, he or she votes for. And when you look at the elites which have been elected or have been promoted in the combined west well that's what people wanted and that's why i'm always in the kind of uh, 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 dark irony mood when they say oh okay there is the maga crowd uh, uh, and trumpists which is well i mean what's the difference these guys from DNC and Democratic Party, they basically destroy everything. If they think that uh, somehow a GOP comes and Trump comes and something going to change, well, they better wake up to the reality. The issue is the systemic. It's in depth. We are talking about merely symptoms, but f fundamentals of the illness of this malaise are totally different and no and especially no people like whoever runs Biden because obviously Biden is not a real decision maker or people who uh, push uh, Trump to run for the next uh, in the next election it won't change a thing really a lot of talk a lot of pompous bullshit as always but there will be very little accomplishments in terms of anything economy or foreign policy because it is what it is i mean it's the systemic it's in the foundation it's the clockwork which doesn't work and um we need to really live with that so in this case uh, going back to mrs uh or whatever her frau uh Berbock, who uh, brought back i'm sorry pardon me for not pronouncing her right, or being in Moscow, yeah, you can sense on face of Lavrov how tired he is dealing with this kindergarten and people who have no freaking clue about anything. And <coughs> again, as I said, if they want to shut down Nord Stream 2, hey, let them. Evidently, however, some uh, other news are starting to uh, percolate, so to speak, in the media. Um, sphere in the West is the fact that, oh, West doesn't want to uh, 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 shut off Russia from uh, SWIFT. Well, uh, it wouldn't matter anyway, but of course if the West wanted to again commit the, uh, you know, shoot itself in, in, into the food, that, okay, shut Russia off the SWIFT and see what happens. And the West will disintegrate even faster because uh, it already has very little in terms of the credit uh, uh, left. And in this particular case, what are you going to do? Russia already has the uh, alternative. And I'm pretty sure that uh, after the, uh, it's already have been announced today that uh, uh, Mr. Raisi, the president of uh, Iran, is going to be in Russia in Moscow tomorrow after tomorrow. And he will open the session of state Duma with his address to Duma, which is a really big time honor. And then he will be meeting 
and don't forget, he's a Shiite clear cleric. Uh, he will be meeting the uh, representative of the uh, Russian Islamic Ummah, which is pr predominantly Sunni. That will be very interesting, obviously, because we all know that there are serious schisms, so to speak, between Shiites and Sunnis, but here it is. Iran is an important uh, player, and Mr. Raisi has been invited personally by Vladimir Putin, so it's a big deal, and there are already uh, naval maneuvers between Iran, China, and Russia announced today. But the big, big part of it is, and the biggest probably, is the fact that Vladimir Putin flies in whatever, two and a half weeks, I don't know, I don't follow it, uh, for the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Beijing as, the, as a personal invitation of, by his friend and colleague, Comrade Xi. And what's going to happen after that? Um, my speculation, again, don't quote me on that, just don't. But my speculation is that some kind of the formal military alliance could be announced there, possible, how probable, I don't know, but not trivial uh, probability. But most likely there will be uh, also announcement of the totally China-Russia-centric financial system. And that will spell the doom even more to what already is the disintegrating Western institutions. And uh, after that, we'll just have to, uh, have to wait and see. But uh, Russia is uh, waiting this written refusal of NATO uh, to give Russia any security guarantees and Russia will, will start uh, dealing with this after that. And that will involve obviously some degree of military technical uh, 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 efforts, attem attempts, not attempts, really efforts, to uh, create a very uh, uncomfortable existence uh, for NATO and uh, then we'll see. But this is what I wanted uh, to talk to you uh, today about, especially considering the fact that uh, I still not 100%. It's one malaise, then suddenly the tooth comes into play and it's still unpleasant. But it is what it is for today. So as always, uh, please don't forget to subscribe uh, and uh, support me on Patreon. And um, I'll be talking to you guys uh, later. And hopefully uh, by the end of the week, uh, antibiotics will kick in uh, big time. I should have less pain. And Monday, Monday I will have the root canal. It's going to be another couple of days before the thing comes down from swelling, swelling and all that. But I should be around, hopefully. For, uh, and uh, I will make more videos uh, this coming week. So this is what I wanted to tell you for today. And as always, take care of yourself and have fun observing this crazy world of ours. Bye-bye.